Hello, this is Scott. So, welcome to my YouTube series on advanced analytics and data science. I normally do these in one of two flavors. I either talk about a particular problem someone's facing in industry and how data science or analytics can help, or a particular method and tool application. Um, and that tool can be anything from uh, open source or commercial, R, Statistica, Spotfire, Python, etc. Um, today we're talking about the latter. I'm talking about uh, simple forecasting methods, um, and the tool is going to be R. So, um, last time I talked about uh, seats decomposition, seasonal extraction, and ARIMA in time series. That was R11. Uh, today is R12, and we're going to be talking about STL decomposition, and that is seasonal and trend decomposition using low F. And um, so you can see that we've got a whole series going, and this has been a pretty much a con from R0 to R12. It's all about uh, simple forecasting, simple time series methods. Uh, next time, I'm going to talk about, I'm not sure. Uh, probably some sort of engineering application. Um, get away from R for a little while and talk about uh, Statistica, I think. So, um, with that, let me clear the annotation and I'm going to go talk about the overall method a little bit about STL. Uh, let me and I just have this one slide. So um, the the reference here is Cleveland, Cleveland McRae interpreting, and uh, you can uh, look at that that article. Um, this is a, a reminder. We talked about the seasonal package last time. Uh, excuse me. Sorry about that. So, um, unlike seats and X11, uh, STL will handle any type of seasonality. So, if you remember back when we talked about X11, it's, it was a very important uh, and powerful method, but it only held, it would only apply to monthly and quarterly data. So, STL has the advantage of um, handling additional types. And the seasonal component is allowed to change over time. And we can control that rate of change, and we're going to see that when we get to R. Um, and the smoothness of the trend cycle can also be controlled, which we'll see um, the uh, the trend trend cycle. So we'll look at the DS window and, and uh, uh, T window for, for that. It can also be uh, robust to different outliers. So the user can specify a robust decomposition, and uh, any occasional unusual variations will not affect the, the estimates of the, the trend cycle. So, um, oh, but they will affect the uh, remainder, but not the trend cycle itself. On the negative side for STL, um, it, unlike X11, which um, had calendar um, variation and everything built into it. Um, STL does not. Um, and it only affords facilities for additive decomposition. So, one way to get around that is to actually do a uh, box cox transformation. So, we covered box cox way back when um, in one of the first um, sessions that we had. And if you apply that box cox transformation, um, you can do it um, that way. Also, there is a function within um, STL. Um, you can use the MSTL, um, which does a, an option to automatically do a box cox before you do anything else. So let's get over to <coughs> our studio. I am using, once again, um, from Hyman and Dr. A, I'm using their, their library here. 
um, FPP2. And <clears throat> let's look at, again, once again, this electrical equipment data. So the first thing I'm going to run is I'm going to run this trend window of 13 and a seasonal window of periodic. And so if I run that, <clears throat> I get a pretty good series. Again, I don't really like care for this. Hopefully you can see my mouse. I really don't care for this uh, um, this series of negative remainders um, running all together. Again, <clears throat> I mentioned that last time. And uh, what, I've, what I've done is I'm going to show you differences. I'm going to change this one parameter, this window parameter, and its effect. <clears throat> and I'm going to run, this is 17. So the initial one was 13, and then I'm going to run at 7. And we'll look at the comparison um, here in the window. So if you're following along, let's look at what happens to the remainders. When I, when I have a window of 7, I get rid of that, those that patch of remainders that I was talking about um, caused by the trend um, capability here. So this is this is falling again. This falls much closer to the X11 that we saw earlier. Um, and then this is a pretty sharp spike um, here at the bottom for when we set it at 17. And um, here's the one, the original one, where we set it for 13. So <clears throat> with that, um, let's look at, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. I'm going to clear this. <coughs> Excuse me. And so this, this I'm going to run this 7 again, and with the window periodic. Um, for the seasonal window, and then I'm going to show you if we actually adjust that from, from periodic, I'm now going to select a window of seven, and let's look at the, the seasonal component. In fact, let me just go ahead and run the yeah, 17 as well. So these are parameters that you can change within it. There's some, some um, uh, those are parameters. Please look at the package, play around with it. Um, but let's look at real quick what happens to the seasonal uh, pattern. Um, if I go back to the original here where it's periodic and then I move forward, I can see a window of 7 and 17 um, and the, the changes that it made, made there. Some pretty sharp spikes on the 7 and the 17. Um, well, actually with all three, but Anyway, you can play around with that and look at the, the changes to the residuals um, in the windows. You can obviously set up a loop, and there is some uh, there is some uh, automatic functionality within R as well. So hopefully that was useful. And if you have any comments or questions, um, that's our Hyman and Dr. A um, reference. And here's my email. Um, Love to hear from you. Thanks.